uh, can you hear me? No, right. So uh, I'll torture you a little bit more with uh, this uh, SYK nonsense. Hope, <laughs> uh, hopefully, not completely in vain. Uh, may maybe we can uh, learn something um, useful from it. Maybe not. I I I'm not sure actually, really. Um, but but why not to try? So w w what I uh, hopefully explain to you is that uh, uh, oops that my right it, it does work. So so the green function, which was uh, quite simple uh, square root of time e in a mean field approximation, can be actually promoted to to objects like this if you take into account this soft mode. Uh, reparameterization fluctuations. Um, and then the question of the ultimate uh, infrared behavior of, of a green function boils down to uh, pretty much the following question that uh, I, I have this green function. Now I have to average it over all possible reparameterizations which are living in this Closet space of dfs one slash sl to r, I have to integrate it with some measure, which is probably invariant har measure on, on this closet space. Although, to the best of my knowledge, nobody proved this statement, but it seems to be quite reasonable. Uh, and then the reparameterization should be take, taken with a weight, uh, which is given by this Schwarzen. Uh, nice Schwartz and derivative. Okay, so th that's the program of action. So you, you, you need to do this functional integral uh, over functions h of time, uh, and you need to integrate out uh, over this uh, with the Schwartz and action with this quite an ugly uh, object. So it may seem to be kind of daunting task, but it's amazingly doable. And the fact that it is doable seems to tell us something that nature is kind to us, so to say. Uh, it, it does try to tell us something more uh, deeper about it. And the reason it is doable is that you, it is a secretly a quantum mechanic. So since it's a one-dimensional functional integral, you can hope that it's sort of Feynman path integral for the quantum mechanic. It's not obvious that it is, but but but. Uh, I'll try to show you uh, quite in a sketchy way, but I'll try to show you it, it's indeed the case. Now to, to see it, uh, I, I will not go into all the details. To see it, you, you, there are a couple of tricks. So one trick is to say that instead of H, since H is monotonic, that's time, time goes forward, otherwise um, time ordering will be badly defined, so many things will go awfully wrong. So you better think that H is, 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 a, is a monotonic function. So since it's a monotonic, its derivative is positive, and then why not to parameterize it as, a, as an exponent with a kind of hyperbolic non-compact phase variable. So the advantage of it is that uh, once you do it, your ugly Schwarzen immediately acquires very nice and you know, familiar form phi dot square, up to total derivative, which you can, as always, forget. So now that's good. Uh, now, another sort of uh, gift of nature is in, in terms of this phi, you can show that invariant measure on this closet space is actually flat. I will not do it, but this is a not a very difficult exercise. So you can show that uh, me measure is flat. So that, that, that ma makes things uh, almost, uh, you know, transparent. Uh, H prime to the power one quarter I is also a good object because it's just exponent of phi over four. So that, that is not sort of foreign object to, to, to the functional integral, the, the like exponents. Uh, the only thing which is sort of annoying I, is this denominator, right? Now you can relatively easy uh, get rid of this denominator with a Feynman trick 
So you notice that this denominator is nothing else but an integral of your e to the phi from tau 1 to tau 2. Uh, uh, and then the fact that it's sitting in denominator with this funny power 1 half, uh, you can uh, beat it with a Feynman trick. Right, you, 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 you introduce a fictitious variable, call it alpha, and then you exponentiate uh, whatever was sitting in denominator. So with this couple of tricks, you end up with something quite, quite nice. Uh, your Schwarzen is just phi dot square. That's nice. That's already quantum mechanics. Uh, this thing is a potential, which is no exponential potential, which is known as uh, Liouville potential. And all what you need to do, you calculate correlation function of phi of exponent of phi of tau 1 and exponent of phi of tau 2 um, in, in, in two different instances of time. Okay? So, uh, 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 and the slightly funny thing is that this Liouville potential is switched on and switched off precisely at these uh, uh, observation times. But that, that, that's not, not too bad. So in the end of the day, you, you end up with, with the quantum mechanics. Uh, so now, now phi is my coordinate in, a, in an effective quantum mechanics. Uh, there is a kinetic energy from phi dot square, and, and then there is this exponential potential. So we are talking about quantum mechanics with, with a potential like this. You can immediately understand that it has a continuous spectrum, which is basically labeled by momentum at, at the left infinity. It's, it's, it's three uh, I, I in this limit. But, but here there is a wall, and, and there is a reflection from this wall. Uh, and um, this reflection changes your, give a phase shift to, to your wave function. Now, the nice thing is that quantum mechanics is also completely solvable. You know all the wave functions uh, in terms of some, some, some basal functions, and you know all the matrix elements. So, so you literally have uh, an analytically exact expression for your uh, green function. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm a bit sketchy. Probably you, you didn't get all, all the points. But what I'm trying to say is that you can do it. I mean, it's not, not, not a high tech. Uh, the important thing, so, so what? I mean, wh wh what's the message? So you take this, uh, this exact expression and you look at it closely. Yeah, by the way, uh, uh, some uh, high energy people now find at least two other ways of, of deriving the same results uh, in a much more aesthetically uh, fulfilling uh, ways, but um, more complicated. Um, so, so you look at the results, and what you find is the following, that uh, if time is, is long, longer than one, but still relatively short, in a sense that it's still shorter than capital N, you, you are back to, to, to what we started from. Green function is one over square root of time. Okay? So our old green thin field result is still there. But it is there only as an intermediate asymptotic. At the times which are uh, longer than something but shorter than something else. But the ultimately long times, which are larger than the, the capital N, uh, the decay rate of your green function chan changes and it decay like uh, minus three half instead of minus one half. So that's, that's a numeric, so I forgot how big was the system, 32 probably. Uh, so, if, so this is time, imaginary time. Uh, so if ta time is, is, is not too long, you sort of see this one-half behavior. And if it is longer, uh, you see sort of three-half. And down there, you start seeing mean level, many body level spacing. So you, you're already sensitive to exponentially large times for, for this particular system type. So it, it, it seemed to be true. I mean, it's not, it's not a... a uh, imagination that uh, the, uh, the decay rate of your green functions change. Okay, so now let me try to, to extract some lessons from this. So what we started from, we, we started from this n to infinity limit, 
And that was a theory of fermions with conformal dimension one quarter, which we simply took from looking at SYK Hamiltonian, seeing four fermions, uh, we, we read out this one quarter, and it corresponds to this non-Fermi liquid nice green function uh, uh, one over square root of time. Now, what we learn after thinking about these reparametrization fluctuations uh, is, uh, which, which are parameterized by this uh, coset space, that the ultimate scaling dimension is actually not one quarter, but, but three quarter. So this three half decay of a green function, the function means that you, you better think about fermion uh, uh, as an object with the, with the different scaling dimension, and, the, and, and, and it is actually three quarter. Uh, and you see it uh, when energy scale, so there is an emergent new energy scale. Initially, you only had energy scale J, but now you, you generated new energy scale, which behaves like J over N. Um, it's an uh, infrared energy scale. So, so the behavior of your, the, the scaling dimension chain goes from one quarter to three quarter once energy is, is below this emergent energy scale. Now, in case you, you, you're interested what, if, what it means, so it me if you do Fourier transform of your green function, what you discover that uh, instead of this one over square root of epsilon, which we used to discuss, which you could roughly call incoherent metal, uh, what the ultimate infrared behavior I I is different, and it's actually s plus square root of epsilon, epsilon to the power one half, not minus one half, and that means that ultimately this incoherent metal wants to be incoherent insulated. Uh, the self energy here goes like square root of epsilon. Um, so self energy is not very well defined object. Um, well, I, 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 if you take <laughs> definition of sigma is one over j, then yes. Um, okay. Uh, so, so there is this transmutation of incoherent metal in, into incoherent insulator, and it seems to be sort of in unavoidable. It's it's not a question if; it's a question only when how low the energy. And the reason for this behavior is this reparametrization modes, which has this funny uh, I I implementation. And I sort of want to stress that it's, at least for me, it's a new object because all the kind of fluctuations which I, we I used to think about are coming from some Hubbard Stratonovich of something, right? either in superconducting channel or in density channel or spin density channel, whatever Hubbard Stratonovich order parameter you, you introduce and you, then you try to, to integrate it out and you think about fluctuations of this uh, Hubbard Stratonovich field. So this field is completely different. I have no clue how to think about it in, in this Hubbard Stratonovich way. And uh, the reason it appears here is precisely this fact that um, you allowed to forget about this, at least in some approximation, and you have to focus on self-energy, which is larger than epsilon. But that's sort of a definition of non-Fermi liquid. So what I'm trying to say is that once you have this property that sigma is larger than everything else, then probably unavoidably you have to think about this uh, reparametrization guys. Whether it's SYK or not SYK, I don't know, but uh, they are there and, and they may be important. Okay. So that's sort of uh, intermediate takeaway uh, from this story. Okay, so now next what I want to, 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 to tell you is how this story plays out 
than when you put your system into kind of array. Okay, and, and wh what does it do? And I'll, I'll try to argue that uh, it, it, it does quite, quite a bit. So, so the model which I will consider, I mean, there are infinite number of models you can, you can now uh, dream of. To be specific, I will have uh, independent SYK uh, realization in each, in each site. So this J, I, J, K else will be labeled by A and taken statistically independent from each other. And then uh, I will introduce uh, fermion hopping between them and will I will implement it as a random matrix. Uh, uh, so this uh, tunneling matrix element V will be also thought of as, as, as some kind of random, uh, random variable. Um, again, with, with uh, motivation that I can't say anything more intelligent uh, than that. Okay, all right, so that. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, it, it may have some specific, uh, but I believe by and large it will be the same, but there is something which I'm not quite certain. No, right, so if, if, if you play this game, then uh, so uh, le, le, let's do it slowly. So, so there was a work of, of, of Leon uh, with, with collaborators, uh, where at least I first learned about the, uh, the, this type of logic. So, so the first thing you do, you say, let, let, let's think about this uh, tunneling uh, as a weak perturbation, uh, and let's do it perturbatively. Then perturbatively, you can calculate your conductivity just by, by doing Kuba formula, uh, so you have this hopping in, in two vertices and there are two green functions and in mean field you know what is this green function one over square root of epsilon so that's a, a very simple calculation and uh, basically in couple of lines you, you find that conductivity behaves like one over temperature okay now I must confess that I'm slightly cheating because uh, I'm thinking about my Arana model so number of particles is not conserved. I shouldn't talk about conducti electrical conductivity. I, I can only talk about thermal conductivity, okay? And then there are factors of temperature between electrical and thermal conductivity, which I put under the carpet. So if it would be complex fermions, then I would be talking about electrical conductivity. I, I hope it's not such a big deal. Uh, uh, all right, so. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. So th th that's good because uh, if conductivity is one over T, then resistivity is uh, linear in temperature, and that reminds you of uh, strongly correlated materials. So that, 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 that's, that's exciting. However, you very quickly understand that it's actually cheating. Uh, why is it cheating? Because look, I started, so my green function has this form and that's why I get this one over T because my green function is, is such crazy. But green functions are crazy because I started from conformal dimension one quarter. I thought that my on-site Hamiltonian is, is SYK. Now if conformal dimension is one quarter, then this guy is a strongly relevant perturbation, which is trivial statement, if I start from fixed point with four fermions, then of course two fermions is much more relevant than, than four fermions, right? So that means that this calculation cannot be true at, at ultimately small temperature or small energy because uh, this thing will grow and my perturbation theory will not, will not be of course applicable, okay? So that means that uh, this one over temperature is, is at best valid only as a high temperature approximation, but not as a low temperature approximation. So, so what these uh, guys understood ba back then is that that means that there is a crossover. So here is temperature and horizontal axis is, is the strength of the tunneling. So there is some kind of a crossover line 
Uh, at high temperature, you indeed have this T linear uh, resistivity strange metal, that's SM stays for strange metal, but at low temperature, uh, this guy is the most important, and that's just the usual Fermi liquid. Okay, there is nothing special about that. So you expect the, 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 this kind of crossover uh, between Fermi, Fermi liquid and, and, and the strange metal. Okay? Now, No, 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 just, right. So, uh, and that's why I, I, I like model with no translational invariance. So I can sort of avoid all these subtle questions about. Very good. Um, but what is missing here is, is, is this reparameterization fluctuations, right? Uh, wh wh what are they doing to my theory? Now, um, uh, so the logic is this, look, if I know that at ultimately in the infrared limit, my scaling dimension is actually not one quarter, but, but three quarters. And that's what I was trying to explain to you before. So if I take this, then this guy uh, hopping is actually irrelevant. It's not any more relevant, okay? Now once you uh, sort of observe this, you, you realize that, that there is a competition who becomes large first. If hopping grows first, then you go to the Fermi liquid. But on another hand, if my reparameterizations are allowed to, to, to develop and to, to renormalize my, my operators to, to new scaling dimension, then this guy will, will never grow and Fermi liquid will not be realized as an ultimate uh, infrared behavior, okay? So if, if you buy this fairy tale, then what you should expect, you should expect a diagram like this. There is a certain quantum critical point, a uh, quantum critical value of, of the hopping parameter of this V guy. So above it, the, the, the picture is like uh, balance et al. Uh, discussed, but below it, if you, uh, if you're hoping initially was not too large, then this reparameterization story develops and um, the system goes to an insulator instead of going to, to a Fermi liquid, okay? And then the strange metal appears as a quantum critical phase uh, of this quantum phase transition, which I think is sort of cute, okay? Now then the question is whether this fairy tale may be uh, may be uh, implemented in, uh, and you know, checked uh, theoretically if, it, if it's true or not. And I think to some extent the answer is positive, so let me briefly tell you how I think about it. Yes? So this is a metal insulator. This is, this is a metal insulator quantum phase what, transition. What happens to the, what did you say happens to the quantum critical I think both compressible. It's, it's an insulator without a gap. It's a soft insulator. It's, it's not an exponential behavior. So, so both are compressible. All right. Uh, any questions? Yeah. There is no fuck there. Is so there is no relevance there? Uh, there is no? There is no relevance for the quantum phase transition? Well, the answer I don't know, but m m maybe you know. <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll n next couple of transparencies maybe answer your question, but you, you'll, you'll tell me. <laughs> uh, well, okay, so, so how, how to think about it? Um, so you can, uh, you can try to, to, to write a, a field theory for this. So uh, locally, as we know, uh, the SYK uh, described by this reparameterization story, and I sort of try to argue that it is important, 
So on each grain, I, I, I have my Schwarzer uh, sitting. So in, in each grain, I have reparametrization, set of reparametrization HA, and they are weighted with, with the Schwarzer matrix, right? So that, that, that's one term. This is already, should be already familiar to you. Now, the other term com comes from tunneling, and that's why the, there is this uh, capital T here. And uh, it better be also um, SL to R invariant. So as I, as I try to explain, Schwarzen has this magic property of being invariant under SL to R Möbius tra uh, transformation. Um, so the tunneling term better have the same property. And indeed, if you think that tunneling is a just product of two green functions, each, each green function is uh, in grain A and in grain B is, uh, is a cell to R invariant. So you, you nicely have sim a piece of action which is also invariant. Uh, but the price you have to pay is that it, it seems to be inevitably non-local in time. So I, I don't know how to write this uh, theory in, in, in terms of local objects, but why not to, you know, nobody tells me that that's a forbidden uh, thing. So it, it is non-local in time, like, I don't know, caldera legit is non-local in time. So that that's of the same sort. Uh, and it, it seems to be sort of exhausting uh, the list of um, uh, as, as SL to R invariant options. You, you pr pretty much, that's it. Uh, so you, you have now two constants. One is uh, my original mass uh, of my Liouville theory. And this W has to do with, with, with tunneling strength. Uh, and and since, this, since the theory is, uh, is invariant under this nice group, you, you can hope that it is renormalizable. So you, you do perturbative RG and uh, it, it should come to itself, okay? So then the question is how do you do RG? Now ideally what, uh, what you need to do is, uh, so you, you have this uh, uh, orbits of SL to R, so you need to, to somehow classify your orbits on fast orbits and slow orbits uh, divided, divi the division according to some cutoff, and then you change your cutoff, and you integrate progressively fast orbits, and you, you know, end up with, with, with slow, and you, and you look how this uh, constants uh, evolve under this renormalization group. Yeah. Well, it represents hopping, I would. Yes, energy flow, yes. Right, of energy. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, parity is conserved here. Hmm? No. In each island it is not. In this action. So in a model it's, it's definitely not conserved in, in effective action. I don't know how to see parity in this action. Because what? They are all driven in They are, yes. Mm, well, yes, and that. Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if, if it, how it implies parity conservation or non, or non conservation. Well, certainly in, at time t1, I, I take my one fermion and, and move it, and then at time t2, I move it back. H is, <coughs> no, H is not bilinear, of course. Hmm? Island fermion parity doesn't change, so in, in this sense, yeah, this, yeah. That's why I was just saying that this may well be implied in the, uh, some, some 
No, that I disagree. You described one here on Panama. Yeah, that I'm pretty sure. Don't see it, I mean, but but I, I, I'm sure physically it's 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 about one here on Panama. Yeah, right. So, um, but I I must admit I I don't know how to read parity uh, looking at this action. Um, all right, so, 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 so that's, that, that's the program. Now, one can uh, uh, implement it in, in some way, although I must admit that it's not completely mathematically satisfactory way. So if somebody knows how to do it uh, better, I think that would be a great thing. So the way we found uh, to be useful I is that you have to think about your reparameterization as a certain group composition uh, of uh, reparameterizations and composition should be sort of fast function, which is a function of a slow function, which is a function of time. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, any other way certainly fails. So, <laughs> uh, so that, 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 that seemed to be uh, the only consistent way of, of thinking about it. And then there are some nice formulas in, in this, uh, Schwar like Schwarz and chain derivative rule and, and, and so on and so forth. So I, I, I will probably skip technicalities. Um, yeah, that's all technicalities. Unless you press me, um, I will skip it. But, but what emerges from here I, I, uh, is, I, is an RJ diagram which I think is quite nice. So this M again is a coefficient in front of Schwarzen and it flows down. Uh, and in that sense, it's, it's indeed irrelevant uh, uh, perturbation. Uh, the horizontal line is basically this uh, W which is associated with tunneling and uh, critical point, uh, critical line emerges. Uh, so if, if your initial uh, tunneling stream was smaller than certain critical value, then you flow to, to here, and that's your pure SYK, basically decoupled SYK island. And if it's larger, then you flow to, to a Fermi liquid. Okay, so, so I believe that, that, that this uh, field theory with two coupling constants, although non-local in time, it it, it has this, uh, it is renormalizable and, and RG diagram looks uh, some, something like this. Okay, now uh, there is no actual small parameter in this uh, thing, but you can invent one pretty much like Senke uh, was explaining to us. In this case, it's a coordination number of your array. If you believe that coordination number is large, uh, that then uh, you can make this perturbative RG really controllable uh, thing. Uh, if, if that is not too, la uh, too large, uh, I, I don't know. But it's, it's a usual, uh, usual trouble. So, uh, so if, if you buy that, then, then indeed wha wha what you find is this uh, quantum phase transition with strange metal being a uh, quantum critical phase, a quantum critical state above this quantum phase transition. Okay, and, uh, and again, I, I crucially need my, my reparameterizations to, to, to get this guy. Yes, you will see divergent 
diagrams in, in one over n. So you will have one over n in front, but, but then at small energy, you will see divergence. Now, whether it is logarithmic or not, I, I need to recall. Depends what exactly you calculate. But, but yes, you, you do see, of course, uh, divergence in perturbation theory. You, you try to calculate four-point function, and you need to invert certain kernel, and this kernel has zero modes, so that, that's precisely what you see. No, so, so if, if that is accepted, then the next level of um, sort of fantasy is uh, would it be nice to, to have something like, yes, Oscar? X point we, we, which I get, this one. Uh, so what, what, what are you asking about it? Um, scaling dimension of the fermion. Uh, good, I think it's half. I, I need to recall, but I'm almost sure it's, it's actually half, not a quarter. So quarter is of course here. Yeah, the, well, no, I take it back. So here it's a three quarter, right? Um, I think here it's half, but don't take my word for, for it. I'll check it. Why is it important? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'll Nori, so, 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 so then, uh, so how, how am I doing the time? So okay, that, 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 that's good. Uh, so, so then uh, the thing which I want to fantasize in, in, in remaining seven or whatever minutes is uh, how to, I if at all, if it's possible to get something like this. Uh, namely to have superconductivity, okay? And now, the answer is yes, but. Uh, so you, you can force superconductivity in your model and many people sort of um, tried and, and in some sense succeeded, but you need to, to make the model more complicated. It's not immediately, so I'm talking about just one SYK island for now. I'm not talking about an, uh, an array. Uh, so there are a few things which you absolutely have to force into your model. Uh, so first of all, you don't uh, anymore talk about Majoranas because what's superconductivity of Majoranas? I, I have no clue what, how to think about it. So you need to go to, to, to complex fermions. Th that's okay. Uh, then you have possibility to think about this coupling constant as being complex or, or, or real. Uh, and what it appears that if you think about them as being complex, there is no chance of getting superconductivity there, which is probably not surprising because basically you put random fluxes in, in, in every possible plaquette between your sites, I, J, K, L. And once you put these random fluxes, whatever superconductivity had a chance to to develop, you, you kill it. But, but, but let's put, uh, put them real, th th that's okay. Uh, then at least theoretically you can hope that this is enough to, to have superconductivity in SYK model. Uh, so once you put real J and complex fermions, uh, on the face of it, um, you have a sort of Garkov part of, of your green functions and you can think that uh, this equation may be solved uh, for, for mat matrix sigma at matrix G, matrix in a, in a number space, okay? Uh, but by whatever reason, uh, this solution does not exist. It, it, it's not obvious at all that, that it should be the case, but um, uh, there is no consistent uh, solution that which go all the way to, to large energy. 
and, and for that you, you, you really need to do numerics. I, I don't know how to argue it on purely kind of analytical grounds. You, you try numerically and you, 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 you clearly see that there is no such solution. Okay, now, uh, but, but we still want sort of conductivity. So then to, to force it into the model, you need to do two more things. You need to add spins uh, up down such that these coupling constants are independent on spins. And uh, in another thing which you have to force uh, into the model is a Hubbard kind of on-site attraction. Okay, so I think this is sort of absolutely minimal um, uh, thing which you can uh, generalize your SIK to, to force it to have a superconducting phase. Is there hmm? you, you need spin, yes. Hmm? Maybe you can. Uh, I don't know the theory that, that you, you, you can, but we, we, we didn't succeed to, to do it. So. Yes, it, it is necessary, and, 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 and uh, I'll show you numerics. Okay, so, 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 so that's the game. Uh, so let me just, uh, since I don't have much time, um, uh, let me just show you, show you numerics. So we want to detect superconductivity uh, in exact diagonalization. That in itself is not completely trivial thing because you know what we've been learned in, in textbook <laughs> is that we want to have uh, expectation value like this. But that's clearly you're not going to find in any, in any finite system because number of particles is conserved, so all eigenstates have definite number of particles, commute with the Hamiltonian. So if it has number of particles n, this guy has n plus two, uh, overlap is necessarily zero. Right? So, so that, that naively that is not going to work. So then how, how do you detect superconductivity in, in, in finite size? system. So I learned from about it from Tony Leggett's review uh, on, uh, on Bose-Einstein condensation in, 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 in traps where they also had finite number of particles. So what, what, what Tony uh, Leggett said that we, we want to have Bose, Bose condensation, so in, in textbooks uh, we look for expectation value of B, right? But, but then he explains that that's, that's, you know, bad textbooks, uh, Russian uh, kind of style textbooks, don't believe it. Um, what, what you actually have to do is you have to calculate um, uh, a reduced density matrix. Namely, you calculate your true ground state or true eigenstates, and you take your bosons, and, and my boson is just pair, uh, and you calculate single particle density matrix by uh, sandwiching your B dagger I B J uh, between true, true ground states. Okay, so now if if you imagine for a sec that each B has an expectation value, then you find uh, that this is rank one matrix. Okay, yeah. By the way, the, the, the trace of this matrix is basically a number of, of bosons, uh, as you see by, by naked eye. Uh, so if it's rank one matrix, so it has only one eigenvalue, clearly this eigenvalue uh, is, is of order of capital N, okay? Now in reality, of course, uh, there is no expectation value of B, so uh, you, you don't see that one eigenvalue is N and everybody else are zero, but you still see that uh, you have one eigenvalue which scales like capital N and everybody else scales like, like one. And if you indeed have such exceptional eigenvalue of this matrix, that's a signature of your condensate. Okay, no, okay. so, so once, once you read this uh, wisdom from, from Tony, uh, you can go and calculate indeed numerically because we have eigenfunct, true eigenfunctions of, um, uh -huh. 
I got it. Um, th through eigenfunctions from exact diagonalization, we can calculate this expectation value, calculate matrix rho ij and, 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 and diagonalize it. So what you find, so this is number of sites, 8, 10, 12, uh, and this is eigenvalues of, of, of single particle density matrix. So you see that most of them are of order one, actually they, they coalesce to one quarter, and it, it's easy to understand why. But there is one eigenvalue, uh, or at least there may be one eigenvalue, which, which split from everybody else, and it grows with, again, with quite reasonable slope um, as function of capital M, okay? So that, that, that eigenvalue may be uh, taken as a, um, as a signature of superconductivity. Supercondu so then you, that was a ground state, then you can do the, the, the same numerics uh, with, with temperature, so thermal averaging, uh, again, those are just eigenvalues of my density matrix, and you see that those who, who used to be uh, of order one, they basically temperature independent, don't do much, but, but this, uh, this singular, singular one uh, exists at small temperature, and then at some finite temperature goes, uh, goes down, so that you can take as an indication of TC, and notice that this TC is roughly independent on eight, 10, or 12 sites. So, so that sort of numerical uh, evidence that this model may have superconductivity. Okay, so now last transparency, which uh, let me show it to you and leave you in sort of suspense. Uh, so you look at it uh, now, for this largest eigenvalue as function of Hubbard U. And you find that for sufficiently small Hubbard U, you don't see anything. Uh, uh, largest eigenvalue is, is the same as everybody else. Uh, and then all of a sudden it, it starts to grow. And exactly at the same point, many body gap appears. So this is a gap in a many body spectrum. So it, it was exponentially small, uh, just finite size effect, and then all of a sudden it, it starts to grow. Very good. Very good. Now, I think, I mean, again, it's my personal opinion. Indeed, if you do it as you described, you will find BCS-like physics that uh, at no matter how small U is, uh, you have small superconductivity, right? I think it, it doesn't work here, and there is a true critical U which doesn't go to zero at in M to infinity limit. Why is that? Uh, it is a peculiarity or in a sense of my model because I took on-site attraction. So I develop order parameter on-site. Site I, J, K, L, each one has some order parameter. And it has some amplitude according to what you say. But, but you need to develop global phase coherence between these sites. So it's a kind of Josephson junction array uh, situation where you have transition as function of, you know, Josephson energy between, between grains. And, and there is extremely cute uh, model wi wi which seem to describe it. But I will not go here. I, I leave it for private. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'm done. This is just one dot.
Well, yes, ha how to go from here to there is a um, separate story, and uh, I don't know yet. We have moving parts still. Well, you, you may talk about odd number of sites, or you may talk about odd number of fermions. Okay. Yes, I, I agree. Fermions is, is more relevant. Uh, you look at, at a ground state energy, for example, as function of number of fermions. And uh, what you find is, I'm following a thing. So if you don't have any u, so this is number of fermions from zero up to number of sites, uh, ground state energy, ground state. So you find something li like this. So for, 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 e for each n, you, you have some many body spectrum starting from the ground state. something like this, right? Now, once you add u, you start seeing even odd modulation. Namely, odd sequences are pull, pulled up. If that's what you ask. If I say what? Well, it, it, it will be higher. So if this is 9, and this is uh, whatever, 8, and this is 10, so 9 will be higher than both 8 and 10. I don't remember if we looked for off-diagonal long-range order for odd number. Um, um, well, yes, but you, you will have sort of superconductor, but with with a quasi-particle, no, no, no. with a one quasi-particle, yes. Yeah, you still have, you still have a condensate, but you clearly see that even an odd is, is not equivalent. 